In this video, we will explore the history of the fat Boeing 7M7, a design pitched to Boeing to solve its middle of the market problem and extend the lifespan of its famous Boeing 737 series. What was the aircraft like and what happened to the design? Let's find out. Back in the distant year of 2015, where people could go outside and Game of Thrones was still a good show, yes, I think you're right. A small mum and pop investment management company called Merrill Lynch sent Boeing a proposal to solve its middle of the market woes. What do we mean by the middle of the market? Well, let's dive into it. The middle of the market is the mythical passenger capacity between 220 passengers and 270 passengers on an aircraft, with the plane having a range of around 5,000 nautical miles. Currently, there is no aircraft that can best suit it. Either a plane is too small and has too small a range, like the 737, or the plane is too big and is too expensive to operate, like the Boeing 787. In the past, airlines would have operated a Boeing 757 in this space, but today there is no aircraft built, under production or planned to serve this mythical 220 to 270 middle of the market. Airbus does come close with its new Airbus A321 XLR, and that has a range of 4,700 nautical miles and can fit up to 220 passengers. But no more. This still leaves airlines scrambling to find a solution or even retaining older aircraft for as long as possible. So where does this Merrill Lynch plan come in? Well, when you hear this, you'll wonder why no one thought of it before. Boeing had already successfully extended the lifespan of its 737 series for longer and longer since its first flew in the 1960s. The original had a length of 94 feet or 29 meters to the latest Boeing 737 MAX 10 resting at a comfortable 143.7 feet or 43.8 meters. That's an increase in length of around 50%, which had the additional benefit of adding 100 more passengers on board. But alas, despite carrying up to 230 passengers, it still doesn't solve the middle of the market problem. You can't make a 737 any longer, otherwise the tail will begin to strike the runway when it takes off. So why not make the plane wider? That's right, instead of extending the length, why not make the 737, in absence of a better word, fatter? Thus the 7M7 concept was born. The very first difference would be that the 7M7 would feature an elliptical cabin. This means an oval shape, almost squashed if looked through a cross section. This would give the aircraft bigger floor space on board, allowing it to fit between 220 passengers to 270 passengers. To do this, the designers moved the seats from a typical Boeing 737 with a 3 to 3 configuration to a very unique 2 3 2 configuration. There would be a throne seat in the middle of the rows, and in business class, Boeing could deploy a 1 1 1 business class. This aircraft wouldn't be a single aisle, rather it would put the wide in wide body with two aisles. Two aisles would mean a much faster turnaround at airports, making it perfect for commuter routes between New York and Chicago or Sydney and Melbourne. Cargo operators would not miss out either. Narrow body aircraft can't fit the same LD3 cargo as wide body aircraft, but this plane could easily fit a single row down the length of the plane, essentially allowing a cargo aircraft with narrow body economics. With a wider body, it would also have a wider fuel tank, meaning more fuel for the standard Boeing 737 engines with a longer range of around 5,000 nautical miles. This is much further than the range of the Boeing 737 that only caps out at 3,850 nautical miles. 
To maintain aerodynamics, the plane would have a tadpole shape when looked from above that would taper out near the tail. This would give it the space of a wide body plane with the economics of a narrow body. And to ensure pressurization, the plane would use the same composite materials like the Boeing 787, a technical marvel which has opened the door to non-circular shapes for aircraft. Of course, it all comes down to money. Boeing would be set to make a saving when it came to engineering and construction of the 7M7. It could use the same materials, manufacturing, suppliers, engineers, marketers, and more as the 737 production line, saving Boeing a fortune. Lastly, pilots would have not had to retrain to use this aircraft. This would have allowed airlines to keep using the same pilots as their 737 fleets and thus saved plenty of money when it came to buying the aircraft. It would have been a simple swap and upgrade for them and it would have resulted in everybody making more money across the board. So why was the 7M7 never built? Well, you see, back in 2011, it seemed like Boeing was on the verge of announcing a new design for the middle of the market. Rumors even had it as the airframe would be elliptical like the 7M7. Boeing had filed several patents for designs wider than they are tall, so it's what the industry was expecting. Flash forward to 2017 and Boeing unveiled a timetable in which the design work would happen by late 2018 through to 2020 for a rumored 797, which very well could have been the 7M7 that was proposed in 2015. Boeing had said that it would be a hybrid of a wide and a narrow body like a 787 and a 737 combined. Important dates would have been aircraft components in 2020, assembling the new plane prototype by 2023, and flying it for the first time in 2024, with the new aircraft ultimately entering service by 2025. The company predicts a market for more than 4,000 of these planes, billions of dollars for the company. Two years later at the 2019 Paris Air Show, Boeing seemed to stagger with any announcement. At the same show, Airbus revealed the A321XLR, securing orders left and right, and Boeing was left holding the bag. Likely, they decided to pause their reveal of their 797 design until they could factor in a competitive advantage of the A321XLR. Emergency order of prohibition to ground all flights of the 737 MAX 8 and the 737 MAX nine and planes associated with that line. Alas, then tragedy struck with the 737 MAX crashes and grounding and a replaced CEO later, the 797 has been put onto the back burner. Boeing has decided to focus on getting its existing 737 fleet back in the air and move to redesign the next concept for a very different market indeed. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this little tale about the fat Boeing 737 and what could have been. I put in some extra work making this video for my many new subscribers, and to that, I just want to say thank you. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other Boeing video on their Boeing Sonic Cruiser, and hang around for my next video coming out soon. Take care.